Welcome to episode 22 of Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. By day, I host a morning radio show on a network in New York and Pennsylvania. By night, I'm a podcaster. If you're a woman like me who loves Jesus and just wants to serve her family and community a little bit better, you're in the right place. Before we get started on today's episode, could you take a moment and subscribe to this podcast? That way you won't miss a single episode. This week, we celebrated... I am in control day. (laughs) But are you? And are you supposed to be? The day became official in the 80s. It was during the assassination attempt on President Reagan. Secretary of State Alexander Haig said, as of now, I am in control here in the White House. The press had a heyday because he wasn't second in line, but he later clarified that he said he was only in charge until Vice President George Bush could be sworn in. Isn't it something when we say we're in control, but we're not? We get called out pretty quickly. In theory, you can celebrate I Am In Control Day by trying to get control. You know, things like organizing your day planner or cleaning out a closet or taking charge of something that you've been kind of wish-washy on. But what is the best thing you can do? Well, it's to let go and let God. And that's when truly amazing things happen. The times we are in might leave you feeling a little bit uncertain, maybe worried. I mean, in the past year, you might have tried to take control of your health or your finances, your kids' schooling, your emotional well-being. But have you really been in control? (laughs) Probably not, because this has been the most out-of-control year any of us has ever experienced. We can't control things like how a virus spreads or how it impacts the economy. We can't control what the school district decides to do with hybrid or in-person learning. We can't control how much toilet paper is on the shelf at the grocery store. But in all of these circumstances, we can control one thing, us, how we react to whatever is happening. Satan loves to use fear. It makes us doubt God. It makes us doubt God's plan, his purpose. And before we know it, we're grabbing at the reins, thinking we're in control. But the key to overcoming fear and its brother, anxiety, is God's word. Because when we read God's promises for us, we see his sovereignty. We rest knowing that surrendering to his plan is always going to lead to the best outcome for our life. Jeremiah 29, 11, and I know you know this verse, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. Are you starting to feel better with not being in control? You know, your life is like a road trip and you've got a plan. You've got a destination. You're in the driver's seat. Your foot is on the pedal. Only you're actually sitting in the back seat. You're not directing the driver. You're not even holding the map because God is steering and he's taking you where you need to go. And this is important. It's not always where you want to go. What you want may not be what is best for you. And by best, I mean God's best, his plan, which is bigger than you could ever imagine. It doesn't always make sense to us, but it's designed to bring God glory. And in your heart, I think you really want to be a part of that, right? If it makes you feel better, the life you're living right now was planned for you before God even put the planets and the stars in the sky. Does this mean that we don't have any choices, that we're just God's robots? No way, because we have free will. But it exists in the scope of God's eternal plan. When our free will choices lead us closer to God's plan, this is really cool, he blesses us. Every moment of every day we get to choose. My way, God's way. My way. God's way. And that's where self-control comes in. See, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And there is where we see fear from Satan is in direct opposition to self-control, which is from God. So the next time you're about to utter the words, I got this, (laughs) maybe ask God, do I really got this? Because in the grand scheme of life, surrender is one of the hardest things that we do. We have to do it every single day, sometimes more than once a day. It means giving up all of our will and placing God's will at the forefront. It means using our lives for his glory and not for our own glory. It's hard. It's a choice. It's a choice that you control. 
If you've enjoyed this episode of Therese Talk, be sure to subscribe and look for the next episode on Tuesday morning. If you really loved it, consider making a gift to Family Life, the ministry this podcast is a part of. Just go to familylife.org and find out more about what we do. Did you know we offer a variety of podcasts? Like you can stay up to date with Family Life News or check out Family Life Kids with your little ones. There's If That Makes Sense. It's a Family Life original podcast about life as a Christian in your 20s and 10 minutes with an interview program with faith-based artists and speakers. They're all free and they're on demand at familylife.org. Just click the radio tab and you'll see podcasts.